Hello and welcome to Daily Politics, reaching you from Trust TV here in Abuja. On this program, we discuss issues around politics, policy, and governance. I am Suleiman Suleiman. With the presidential election just about one year from now, and party primary scheduled for September or even earlier, former Vice President Atiku Abakar has informed members of the PDP Board of Trustees of his presidential ambition. He said, but the party might not survive another eight years as an opposition party. Atiku hosted the board members during a consultative meeting in Abuja on Tuesday. He asked the elders of the party to work with him to clinch the presidency in 2023. He also noted that the administration of President Olisegun Obasanjo, which he served as the vice president, still remains the best government Nigeria has had since 1999. He said in his speech, by the next eight years, I don't know how many of us will be left in politics, and it may even ultimately lead to the death of the party because people tend to gravitate, particularly in developing countries, towards government. Unquote. He said, he said, recall that the former vice president is one of the leading founders of the PDP and was the party's flag bearer in the 2019 presidential elections, which he lost to the incumbent, Muhammad Buhari. So tonight, we ask, what are the chances of Atiku clinching the party's ticket? How will the party handle the zone in question that some say is tearing the party apart? Above all, can the PDP go further than in 2023 than they did in 2019 and 2015? With me to discuss these issues is Mr. Paul Ibe, who is the media advisor and spokesman of former Vice President Atiku Abuka. When Mr. Paul Ibe speaks, it is the Vice President, former Vice President, who is speaking. You're much welcome, sir. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But we'll take just a short break. When we return, we'll jump right into it and bring you the insights and the analysis around the PDP's presidential politics 2023. Stay with us. <music> Welcome back. This is Daily Politics on Trust TV, and we're discussing the politics, the presidential politics, with this time around, not on the APC, but on the side of the PDP. And with me is Mr. Paul Ibe, who is spokesperson and media advisor to former Vice President Atiku Abaka. You're welcome once again, sir. Thank you very much, Suleiman. Yeah, thank you. So um, uh, let's maybe start from the general, you know, before we move them to, to, to the specifics. Some people are saying that the APC, the ruling uh, All Progressive Party, they 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 are, you know they are engulfed in crisis, but the opposition PDP is not taking enough of the opportunity of that. They are not seizing the moment, you know, to to get ahead of the APC in the minds of Nigerians. You know, it was clear from the beginning that uh, you know the ruling party, you know, was a contraption. You know, it was a special purpose vehicle, mm. you know, that was coupled mm. for the purpose of, you know, uh, wrestling power. Mm. They were not adequately prepared, mm. you know, for governance. And it's like uh, having a vehicle, mm. Tukumba vehicle, mm. that cannot uh, go the distance. You're putting it on a long journey. And sooner than later, mm. see that it's overheating or the you know, shaft or something is going wrong. So mm -hmm. uh, that's why you know, you've seen all manner of, uh, you know, uh, people have, uh, there are memes, memes about the APC mm -hmm. and from uh, all promises canceled mm -hmm. to all uh, progressive uh, confusion. Mm -hmm. That's the state of the party and mm -hmm. it's a reflection. So not all progressive Congress, but all progressive confusion? I don't know where they're progressing to. Okay. If what is going on in the country presently as we speak mm. is a measure mm. of you know of, mm. of, of what they had you know set out to achieve mm. I, am, I am sure for example mm. that the uh, the daily trust tv is uh, is running on generator as we speak yes but it has always been like that it was like that during the years of the pdp as well it has never been this bad okay 
It has never been this bad. But you cannot compare. Mm. This was a party that came on the mantra of change. Mm. And uh, it's expected that this party mm. will be trying, you know, run a transformational government. Trans mm. You know, and uh, it means that you will not have a recourse mm. to what it was. You will not do like they did. You are trying to change, you know, attitude of governance from, mm. you know, the corruption and the security mm. and the economy. Those three things were the key. Mm. These things that we're talking about. What is the state of the economy? Mm. I just learned that diesel is mm. 800 uh, naira per liter. Mm. Public power supply mm. is nothing to her right away. There is non existent. Mm. There is no fuel. Mm. There is no electricity. Mm. There is no food. There is no security. Mm. What, are, what are they going to offer us? So that, that's precisely why Nigerians are asking that what is the PDP going to offer Nigerians, you know, between now and next year, or particularly next year and beyond, that is different from what we know now, but especially different from what Nigerians know of the PDP before 2015. But what the PDP will offer, as represented by His Excellency Atuk Abubakar, mm. is an inclusive government okay. to start with. Um, People have people have been shunted out of, I mean, you know, out of, uh, out of, uh, you know, relevance. And uh, when you run a country like Nigeria, mm. the kind of diversity that we have, mm. for a responsible leadership, mm. you need to take cognizance of the fact that you have to run an inclusive government. Mm. We have never been this divided in this nation. Mm. I don't know. I mean. I'm, I'm above 50, mm. and I, I can't remember the last time. Mm. I'm probably not young enough for the Civil War, mm. but we have been so divided. Mm. And so, on that basis, mm. what are you going to, if you have running, I mean, if you run a government of people that are not together, mm. unity is very key. So you have an Atiku Abubakar that is coming together as a unifier, mm. as somebody that um, has a knack for bringing people mm. and managing, you know, men, and materials, mm. you know, uh, he has a knack for, you know, scouting, bringing the best talent wherever they may come from. Mm. And indeed, there are talents all over Nigeria. Mm. But you need somebody, a leader who can, you know, who has that capacity to be able to attract, you know, those people. Mm. You need somebody who has a vision. Mm. I mean, I don't know about this administration, mm. whether they even conceived, whether there was a, you know, that whether there was a plan. Mm. Whether there was a, a you know a policy document mm. that you know that was you know that would drive their you know governance, mm. so as we speak, Atuk Abubakar's policy is in the works. It's been updated for every every election site you know he has run. He has always had a policy mm. document so that he will articulate. These are the problems. These are my solutions. Mm. These are the strategy that I'm going to use in achieving all those things. Mm. That's, that's, that is what it's all about. Mm. You are prepared, mm. you know. And ultimately, a man, a woman, cannot give what they don't have. Mm. So Atiku Abubakar mm. will be providing leadership because we've never had one mm. in the last seven years. Interesting. No leadership at all? The leadership mm. has been on sabbatical. Okay. So b before we get to that point, where Atiku will actualize all of these uh, things, he will first of all win the par his party's ticket, uh, uh, at the PDP. So the, 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 the process begins there. So, but even there, the, 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 the thing is, people are saying after the PDP had their convention in October, which was a good thing to have had it uh, uh, earlier. But since then, there has been silence. There's been no additional significant step forward into the elections after the, the, the parties uh, are primaries. For example, there is no, after the parties convention, for example, there is no calendar for the parties presidential primaries, which is the next thing most people would expect to see, particularly now that you have an electoral law that you know, advises that parties should have their presidential candidates six months to the election. So why is the PDP stuck in one where they were since October? The PDP was, you know, was not stuck. Okay. 
every party has to take its cue mm -hmm. from the you know the umpire, okay. Heineck. Mm -hmm. There was no electoral law until about two weeks ago mm -hmm. or thereabout. Mm -hmm. There was none, and so the parties mm -hmm. could not plan for anything. Whatever they are planning must be in tandem mm -hmm. with you know the you know the guidelines of uh, you know of Heineck. I but there was an existing electoral law before the, the amendment. But that law and was going to change. Okay. And the parties, I mean, I mean, they were mindful of that. Mm. They were not going to operate. Mm. You know, everybody knew that that law was mm. going to, it had its limitations. Mm. It was going to change. You will not plan with the old law. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. Now that that law has been passed, the INEC has rolled out its guidelines, the parties mm. have, uh, you, know, they have, you know, they have come out, uh, mm. you, know, you know, smoking, so mm. to say. Thank you. So one of the sticky issues in your party, particularly leading to its uh, presidential primaries, you know, we'll come to other aspects of this uh, election uh, later on, is the issue of zoning. You had uh, a meeting, uh, a retreat in Ghana, and also uh, uh, earlier, uh, uh, yes, I mean on Monday, uh, and, and so on, which none of which there's been no agreement coming out of that. What are the key issues that is present, preventing the PDP from reaching an agreement? Because without that clarity, you know, don't you think Nigerians would not be able to know what the PDP is offering? You know, I, the stakeholders, every mm. member of the PDP has mm. a fair idea of, you know, how, mm. you know, they want this process to play out. Okay. So it's all politicking going on right now. Mm. But I believe that there will be a consensus. Mm. There will be an aggregation you know, towards the center and people, all of the issues mm. you know, that are before the, you know, the party right now, whether they are zoning or you know, whatever, it is, they're going to resolve those issues. Mm. Are you saying that the presidential primaries will be decided by consensus? No, okay. I haven't said that. Okay. I'm saying mm. that they will reach agreement mm. on all of you know, the issues mm. that are confronting them. Mm. They will. The, the PDP has, mm. you know, over the years since it came into inception in 1998, yes. they have a robust mechanism for dealing with every of the, you know, issues. They've not mm. been found wanting. They will address all of these issues, mm. including zoning. Including zoning. So but, but part of the issue is the arguments about zoning itself. There are <clears throat> maybe two or even more different uh, schools of thought. Some are saying that, okay, in this party, the last president was a southern person, former president, uh, good luck, Jonathan. For that reason, the presidency should be zoned to the north. Others are saying that, no, the current president is already a northerner. So maybe you should zone the, part, the, the, the presidency to the south, you know. And then others are saying, no, maybe no need for zoning. Just open the floor for, for each. Your, uh, uh, your candidate, former Vice President uh, Alija Atiku Abuka, which position does he re represent and how is he articulating this position within the party? You know, Atiku Abuka appreciates mm. all of the positions, you know, mm. that are being advanced. And, uh, but let's look at it this way. These are unusual times. These are unusual times. Mm. Nigeria is facing an existential threat. Okay. Mm. Like somebody said, Nigeria is in the ICU. Mm. Intensive care unit. Intensive care unit. Okay. Could you elaborate? Why do you think so? Mm. In every facet, in every area, politically, economically, socially. Mm. I mean, everything is breaking down. Mm. It looks like as if uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's doomsday. Mm. But there is a way forward. Mm. And that way should be the best mm. of all that we have. Should be a man who represents the, you know, the truest Nigerian mm. in every sense. A patriot, somebody who is not a bigot, who is acceptable to the north, mm. to the south, to the east and the west. Mm. A man that, as an able person, I am prepared to call my own, own name. Mm. And I, I mean, I think it's like that. 
a lot people from different you know sections of Nigeria see him mm. you know in that light mm. that's the kind of leader that we need at this point in time mm. somebody that everybody will have confidence in mm. somebody that we will trust to represent our interests notwithstanding where he's coming from mm. that's the kind of leader have you ever seen Nigeria play a football match yeah most of the time yes They go with the best on that team, hmm. irrespective of where they're from. Hmm. And at the end, Nigerians are better for it. Hmm. Because when you put your best foot forward, hmm. victory is assured. Hmm. So Atiku represents. Hmm. In him, he encapsulates all of this. this thing that we, I don't, we don't want to go into that argument. Hmm. Or I don't want to go into that argument hmm. of the South has had, uh, of the 16 years mm. up until 2015, mm. the South had had 14 of those years versus two, mm. two of, of, of the North. Within the PDP. Within the PDP. Mm. By 2023, cumulatively, the South will have had 14 years and the North, mm. 10 years. 10 versus mm. 14. So there's some kind of priority, priority. Or, or not? You know, so nobody wants to I mean, have that game. What we're saying mm. and what we are you know, trying to make our party to see mm. is that the PDP needs to win election, 2023 election, mm. if we must salvage you know, the, the situation that we are in must fix this country. Mm. It has to win an election. Mm. And the only way you can win that election is to pick the very best candidate that everybody from every part of country sees as their own. Mm. In Atiku, there is an ownership. Mm. He's our own, he's our son. Mm. So what does this position represent now in terms of the zoning formula? Does it mean no zoning? Or does it mean zone to the north? No, you know, I wouldn't know. Okay. And I wouldn't speak for the party. I wouldn't okay. go ahead of the party. Mm. But what I'm saying is ultimately, mm. the party will resolve all of this uh, issue. So let us mm. give the party the opportunity to do that. The party is engaging itself at different, you know, they have had caucus meeting, they have BOT and the rest of the NEC meeting. Mm. They will resolve, you know, their issues. Thank you. But, but in the news earlier <clears throat> uh, today and, 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 and yesterday, the, the vice president was quoted to have said that because, you know, uh, 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 the, the by virtue of the fact that the PDP has had, you know, the, 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 the PDP is not a ruling party, zoning should not be an, an issue in the PDP, you know. It, shouldn't, it is the APC who should be worrying about where to zone the presidency to or, or, or not. What is, does that position you know, represent the same thing as, as you are saying now? No, if mm. you look at the APC, mm. I mean, let's even uh, leave the PDP for now. Mm. I mean, the North has done, uh, will be doing eight years by 2023. What does that uh, mm. suggest? Well, that's for the APC people to say, <laughs> I'm not in their party, yeah? <laughs> so it is wrong mm. to aggregate all of the, I mean, in having this debate about, uh, mm. you know, zoning to aggregate uh, both the APC mm. and the PDP. And it is wrong because you cannot recommend the, the uh, zoning of, of the APC to the PDP. Mm. It doesn't work, you know, that way. Mm. Their zoning, you know, is different from that of the PDP. In other words, the PDP is free to field a northern candidate, regardless of the fact that President Buhari is also from the north. Well, the PDP is not APC. Okay. Yeah. But what about Nigerians? How do you think Nigerians would take it? Do you think Nigerians will accept that explanation? Because when Nigerians think of zoning, you know, uh, uh, and I am talking about Nigerians as separate from the political parties in the country. They don't make a difference between party A or party B. Their thinking is this Mr. A is a northern person, is president, and then Mr. B is a southern person. They see, want to see an exchange 
of the positions between these two uh, uh, ministers. They don't care that much whether the party is uh, uh, PDP or APC. How does that affect your position? Nigerians are desirous of a leadership hmm. that will fix this country, hmm. that would, you know, this country is rich, so rich, hmm. and yet we are so poor. They want a leadership that will bring Nigerians together. Mm. The divisions are unprecedented. Mm. They are looking for a leader that will accommodate their interest. Mm. That they matter as Nigerians. Mm. They are not second class citizens. A leader who will look to the farthest point of Nigeria mm -hmm. and give those Nigerians an opportunity. They are looking for a leader that would change the current situation mm -hmm. of hopelessness and give them hope. They are looking for a leader mm -hmm. that will fix the economy, mm -hmm. that will provide jobs. But beyond that, you know, this, this, this practical politics within the, the, the AP itself, I mean, within the PDP itself, because there are concerns in some quarters, as you are aware, that the vice president was the party's last presidential candidate, you know. So he's been given his opportunity and he fell short, you know. This is not my position, but the position that you know has been expressed uh, uh, in, in, in the press. And for that reason, he should support others within the party to, to, to also give uh, their own, uh, to give it a shot. What do you say to that? You can only drag a, a horse, hmm. an unwilling horse to the river. You cannot force it to drink water. Hmm. People are waiting for power to be handed over to them. Mm -hmm. You need to engage the system. If you think that you're qualified mm -hmm. and that the Constitution is on your side, you have capacity mm -hmm. and you have something to offer, you throw your heart in the ring. Mm -hmm. His Excellency Atikoboka has not stopped anybody mm -hmm. from aspiring to be president. So the question is, why would anybody seek to stop him? Hmm. Okay, but, 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 but in, in some countries, people do that, that, okay, for example, uh, Hillary Clinton in 2016, she's had the chance, and for that reason, she didn't come out in 2020. That was Does, is that a good example for Nigeria? Or? That was Hillary Clinton. There have been instances. Hmm of when people have uh, uh, the current president, incumbent. Yes. Uh, how many times did he run an election? Mm. Several times. Huh? Mm. Several times. Mm. Okay. So b b the, 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 the another thing is the governance, you know, in, in, in our party structure, either in the APC or in the, in the PDP, governors tend to play a very crucial roles. And sometimes they tend to go with other governors as well. You know, they, they tend to uh, take uh, similar positions on same issues or same positions on the same uh, kind of issues. The, 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 does the vice president, you know, uh, uh, have the former vice president, does he have the support of other governors within within the APC? I mean, within the party. The former the vice president is engaging, you know, the governors like hmm. other stakeholders of the party, hmm. you know, and he believes that his emergence will only be, you know, come about as a result of the aggregation of, uh, mm -hmm. of the, you know, of the interests of all of these stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So he's not taking anyone for granted. Mm -hmm. He's engaging them. He's been meeting with them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a continuous engagement. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, not everyone will be on the same page, mm -hmm. you know, with you. Mm -hmm. So our strategy is to ensure that the end game is that our interest aligns with the majority interest in the PDP. Mm. That's 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 what we, that's what it is. No, everybody cannot be on, you know, you know, come on board. There mm. are people may have a different, uh, you know, you know, ideas mm. about, uh, you know, uh, the the you know the kind of uh, 
you know, candidate mm. that they think the party has. But I mean, they are entitled to their views, they are entitled to their positions. Mm. And that's why we're, you know, we're in a constitutional democracy. Mm. And as a Democrat, from a vice president, we respect mm. so whatever is the outcome. Even if he doesn't uh, 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 emerge as the candidate, will he be willing to support other candidates? Uh, when, I mean, whoever wins? When, 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 mm. when in 2019, we, I mean, it's, it's come out, it's been, you know, it's, it's been you know, asserted that he won the election, but the Supreme Court ruled, what did he do? He accepted the, you know, the verdict, mm. and he moved on, and found other things to do with his time, mm. and he went back to school. And today, went as back a to school. Yes, he himself as a student or as went a student. To, okay, interesting. What school? Uh, 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 Ruskin, you know. Uh, in, Anglia in Ruskin in, 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 in England. Anglia, yes. That's interesting. To, to study what? Study yeah. master. You know, has a master's in international relations. Mm. Okay. So, but, um, that, that, that's quite interesting, and, and I'm sure Nigerians listening to this and watching this now would, would find that uh, interesting in, in, in its own right. But you said earlier that he's not taking uh, anyone in the PDP uh, for granted. Absolutely. He's not taking any governors in the government. Yeah. But that's precisely what the governors or some of the governors are uh, accusing the, uh, the former Vice President uh, Tiku Abakar for, that he has come out to say that uh, he always wins the PDP ticket. So this one is also lying there for him to just pick up. But at the end of the day, it's the delegates that will have to make this determination. But did he say that? You know, what he was, they're just making a mountain out of a molehill. Mm. And whatever is being said, it's all in the nature of politics. Mm. Okay, how? Mm. In other words, he said that. Um, <laughs> it's politics. Okay. Mm. Yeah? Mm. It's all politics. He will not take anyone for granted. He's mm. engaging, you know, with them, including the people that you said they said. Mm. He's still engaging with them. Mm. Because he knows that uh, he needs everybody. Mm. He needs everybody. Mm. And he's talking to them, you know, asking them to see reason why at this point in time mm -hmm. we need to put our best foot forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you believe he's the best foot within the PDP? I believe he is. Okay. Not just believing he is. I mean, his, his antecedent speaks volume of him. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have been in this country in the last 20 years or thereabouts, mm -hmm. uh, look at the former vice president and his role as the, you know, in, in, in the during uh, the 1999 2007 mm -hmm. as vice president, mm -hmm. as chairman of the National Economic Council, mm -hmm. and with, you know the Obasanjo Atiku presidency, you know turned out a, a GDP of average of about seven percent. Mm -hmm. I mean jobs were coming, Nigerians in the diaspora mm -hmm. were coming home to start businesses, mm -hmm. and. You know, mm. I think m m on the second half of the program, which we are just about, uh, we have just about reached now, I'll be taking you on certainly on the specifics of the vice president's agenda. You know, what he is selling first to his party, you know, but also to the wider Nigerians. You know, since it is not only his party that are involved in this, but also everyone, uh, uh, every Nigerian. But before we, we we get to that, according to the new electoral law. The expectation is that all the political parties should have uh, a primary, I mean, a, a presidential candidate, not just, but also for governors and all candidates generally, you know, by the first week of June. That's just barely uh, less than three months away. Uh, what time are we expecting the PDP since at least you have been able to conduct your primaries, I mean your convention by now, what time are we expecting the PDP to do this? I believe that by the guidelines of the PDP, the sale of forms mm. starts uh, tomorrow. To, to, for, the, for the elections across the country? Yeah. Mm. Go on. So mm. for the primaries, the sale of forms starts tomorrow. And mm. Once uh, the sale of forms, you know, probably lasts another one week and rest of it, the game has started. Mm. But do you have a calendar with specific dates across the entire no, spectrum no, of No, I don't have you okay. know, that because I know that the party was yet to ratify mm. you know, the proposed uh, mm. you know, uh, uh, timetable. Mm. Mm. But I think uh, before the end of the week, 
they should be able to do that. Interesting. So you're already gearing up for for That's the right. uh, presidential yes. uh, for the primaries uh, uh, proper. Thank you. So maybe uh, when we return from uh, this short break, we'll be going on to other uh, issues. Thank you very much uh, for staying with us, um, our viewers. We are discussing issues around the PDP presidential politics as we march on gradually, but surely towards the 2023 presidential election. But not just presidential election, but also all the other elections that will follow. Stay with us and we will be right back with uh, Mr. Paul Ibe, spokesperson for Vice President Atiku Abakar. Welcome back. This is Daily Politics on Trust TV, and we're discussing issues around PDP presidential election with Mr. Paul uh, Ibe. Just before we went on break, we were talking about the PDP uh, uh, issues around the, the primaries, but also issues of zoning and, and, and so on. But now we're looking forward to talking more specifically about what the vice president represents, first for his party, but also for Nigerians as we march on towards the 2023 elections. Uh, uh, Mr. Paul, uh, uh, Paul, again, even before I go uh, into that, you know, you talked about the antecedents of the former uh, Vice President Atiku Abaka, but there is a lot of interest in Nigeria for some form of generational change in politics that all those people, you know, some will say old men, all those people who are over 70 years, you know, and who have been around and about, you know, for, for a fairly long time, some of them even much earlier than 1990 now. There's quite a clamor among wide sections of Nigerians to leave the stage for younger candidates to also have an opportunity to contribute to their country's development. How does that affect uh, your, 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 your principal's campaign? Even in organizations, when there are vacancies, hmm. you will apply to be considered hmm. for those positions. Nobody will hand a job to somebody that did not apply hmm. for it. You will apply, you'll be screened, hmm. and if you have found one, you know, you, you know, you'll be given a job. Hmm. What am I saying? To be a leader hmm. at whatever level, you need to be engaged. You need to be mentored. Mm -hmm. You need to be involved so that you can learn into the ropes. Mm -hmm. Nobody is saying that young people should not play a role in governance. Mm -hmm. Nobody has said that. You know, but we should stop fanning this embers of division mm -hmm. for a country that is already divided along multiple fronts religion, mm -hmm. tribe. We now want to have old versus young mm. people, you know, pitch one against the other. I don't think that's what we need to do. What we need to do is to create an environment where young people will get involved. Mm. They could start from the, you know, from, uh, you know, different levels of local government, mm. you know, state house of assembly, you know, house of representatives, and they will grow. And when they are work, they are handiwork, you know, is saying, mm. people would, you know, root for them. Mm. 
And so we should stop this whole idea, the people waiting that, you know, waiting for power to be handed over to them. It doesn't happen that way in politics. Mm. You need to get involved. Mm. You need to walk the, you know, through the system. Mm. You need to engage. You need to network. Mm. And over time, you, you know, you'll be matured. So I believe that young people can be, you know, you know, can be involved in the governance, this, you know, this, you know, stuff of our country in so many ways. Mm -hmm. If they are ready to, you know, for the challenges of, uh, you know, governance at the highest level, they can also present, you know, mm -hmm. themselves for consideration. Mm. But, but the, the young people people are talking about is not people in their twenties or thirties who should start at uh, a, a councillor level or state assembly or. Uh, National Assembly. People are saying people who are younger, who are stronger, who are fit, you know, and strong enough to withstand the the rigors and the demands and the physical demands of being a president, you know. So maybe somebody in their fifties, in their you know up to sixties, rather than people in their late seventies, like the vice president. You know, why? That's, why that's, uh, age? Okay. It's not a it's not yeah. a handicap. President Biden mm. is 78. Mm. The former president in uh, Malaysia mm. was called mm. out of retirement mm. to fix the mess that had been. It was 90 years, right? Mm. So age has never been seen to be it. What is important is what does the person have up here. Mm. What are his priorities? What, are, what is his vision? Does he have the capacity? Does he have the experience? Mm. Is he healthy? Is he fit? Mm. That is what is important. Mm. Mm. Atuku Abubakar is healthy, he's fit. Okay. To stand the rigors. Mm. Because that's part of the, what people are saying, that you know, the idea where you have a situation where the president will be away from the country for weeks, sometimes even for several months, they don't want to repeat a repeat of that. And that possibility exists the older the candidate is. Now, it would be wrong mm. to use a, another you know, parameter for an app to start to measure Atiku. I mean, Atiku, mm. like I said, Atiku is healthy, mm. Atiku is fit. Mm. You know, Atiku has a vision for Nigeria. Mm. You know, he has been planning. You know, this, he has a policy document, mm. you know, that he will probably subject, he give Nigerians an opportunity, mm. you know, for a buy-in to, you know, to make it better. Because, I mean, we live in a, you know, very dynamic, uh, you know, time. Mm. So situations, uh, you know, change. I mean, as at the time we are preparing for this, we will not know that we will get to a situation where diesel is 800, you know, naira. So mm. whatever policies that are being put in place, you need to fine-tune them, mm. you know. So he has all of that. And, you know, he's a, I mean, he's, he's a good manager. He has a way of finding people, I mean, wherever, not, not restricted to one side of uh, the country because mm. he believes that talents are bound in every nook and cranny of Nigeria. Mm. And because of the trajectory, because of the experience, because of the journey that he has made, he has encountered, you know, quality Nigerians from diverse, uh, you know, background. Mm. And a lot of the people who are leaders, mm. either as governors or, you know, people are in the house, they pass through him. Mm. He mentored them, you know, over the years. Mm. And that's the kind of leader that you need at this point in time, mm. who can be able to sit and bring people. Mm. I was going to t take you on that, because earlier you mentioned about you need a unifier, yes. somebody who can unify yes. the countries. It is wanting to identify a problem that, you know, that we are not, never been more divided than we, we, we are now which many Nigerians may or may not dis uh, agree. But it is also another thing to, 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 to have actually a plan to solve that problem. So should <clears throat> the vice president emerge as the PDP's flag bearer and he's campaigning to Nigerians, what is he going to tell them about unifying the country? How is he going to do it? I'm talking about how. Listen, you know, like, you know earlier I said that mm. We are all Nigerians. Yes. Nobody must ever be made to feel that they are second class citizens. Mm. That in itself creates cracks, mm. it creates divisions. Mm. 
And so when you tell somebody to go to hell, the person will create a hell, mm. you know, for you. All of the, you know, the insurgencies that we are having, mm. some of them are a creation of uh, people that has been schemed out of, uh, mm. you know, out of, you know, you know, out of, uh, you know, uh, of, of, you know, of the system. Mm. They play no role. They are not considered as, uh, you know, citizens. Even so, how is he going to address this? That's issues. right. Mm. So, you need to remove all of those issues because unwittingly, mm. policies of government, actions and inactions of government, mm. help in promoting uh, some of this violence and insurgency and the rest of it. Mm. So, you need a, you know, you know, a leader who recognizes that mm. to even start with, to know that those those things that they did are done. They are capable of triggering a, you know, crisis, mm. and you remove all of that, and you will have solved a major, mm. you know, part of, uh, you know, of the, you know, of the problem. Okay. And you'll also ensure mm. that you need to accommodate, you know, diverse interests. The country is diverse; mm. it's so diverse that every little thing that you do, mm. you need to think about its ramifications, its implications for the rest of, uh, you know, for, you know, for, you know, for, you know, sections of the country. And Atiku knows this country very well. It's not just a, he knows the country very, very well. Thank you. So, but, but in, 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 in a, b beyond that, you know, uh, but there are at least two issues that Nigerians disturb ni quite a lot of uh, Nigerians now. It's even difficult to see to which one to start with. But let us start with the insurgencies that you mentioned earlier. You know, <clears throat> not just insurgencies, but agitations. We want to dismember Nigeria. We want Biafra. We want Odudua Republic. You know, Boko Haram here. Bandits there. You know, the whole country is 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 in in you know in, in sort of trembling at all times. You know, security challenges uh, uh, everywhere. So, how is the what is the vice president's plan that he is selling to his party, which he will then sell? Uh, to Nigerians, effectively. The insurgency, for issues. example, mm. Atuka Waka is Boko Hala for okay. Boko Haram. Mm. Is the answer. Mm. He understands the place of education. Mm. And I just told you he went back to school. Mm. I mean, if you could do that, mm. what else do you need to say about mm. the premium he places on education? Mm. He promotes it. He, you know, he's, you know, he's, you know, he has founded a you know, a chain of schools from kindergarten mm -hmm. up to the university, mm -hmm. you know, offer scholarships mm -hmm. to people at different, mm -hmm. you know, levels. He knows that he, you know, deliberately, you know, whatever he does, even during the Boko Haram insurgency, mm -hmm. when there were a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, amajiri, mm -hmm. I mean, in Yola, for example, I know mm -hmm. that they don't have a culture of amajirism, mm -hmm. but because of you know, uh, uh, the refugee, this, you know, a lot of the young people yeah. whose parents I mean, have died in insurgency were yeah. there. And what did they do? The, you, know, he, you know, he encouraged the university to set up the feed and read program. Yeah. And so those young people were given a meal a day. And they were taught basic maths yeah. and English. And then he understood that you don't have to take away their religion from them. Yeah. And it was difficult getting the malams that they were with to, you know, to, to, you know, to give them that opportunity. Yeah. What so are you going to have a feed and read program for the whole country? You, you see, for... there must be a starting point. Okay. Mm. To recognize the place of education, mm. it's a starting point. Mm. To be able to, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, have policies mm. that will ensure mm. that, you know, you give basic education, mm. you know, at least the first... Uh, if not, I mean, it is there. There's a policy for basic education, mm. or, you know, primary school, you know, education. That's what uh, UB is supposed to be doing. Mm. But that is being implemented in bridge. And so you need somebody to, who needs to up, you know, the game mm. and ensure that those crucial first mm. uh, 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 nine years, nine years mm. of education, uh, nine years, six Primary school and then uh, three of uh, uh, you know junior but, secondary. But how how would that address the, the the immediate security challenges in the country? For example, uh, bandits, particularly, which is more heightened 
than others. How would that also address issues like IPOB, uh, issues like Yoruba Nation, you know, that are all part of this, but also even in the, in the Niger Delta, where you still have pockets of uh, uh, militancy here and there, or every now and then? In the Southeast, it's, mm. it's a, the people, I mean, have a sense of belonging. Okay. Mm. That's just what it is. Mm. Give them a sense of belonging, you know, and how do you do that? Because President Buhari is building the second Niger bridge, and that is not enough sense of belonging. How do you address it's something It's not only like just about infrastructure. Interesting. Mm. It's not just about infrastructure. Mm. It's not. Mm. It's not. I mean, there are soft, not just the hardware. Mm. There's also the soft, mm. you know, where, you know, that is involved. Mm. They are human beings. Mm. They are Nigerians. Mm. And they need to be so treated. Mm. Don't alienate them. Mm. That's it. And the same thing also in the Niger Delta. Mm. I mean, a chunk of uh, what is our revenue, mm. you know, comes from there. You also need to look because okay, fine, they have set up the Niger Delta mm. Commissioner Office, but I think it has to, you know, go with that. What about the environmental degradation mm. that goes on on a daily basis? Mm. You know, that destroys the. Uh, you know, their, you know, their habitats, farms and, and, you know, and, and, their farms, and, 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 you know, yes. fishing mm. and the rest of it. That's mm. just it. And mm. it's okay, you cannot use one, you know, measure for, for mm. all of the, you know, all of the regions. Mm. You need to, they, they are peculiar, you know, they are peculiar needs mm. for each of those uh, regions. I just told you about, you know, in, uh, you know, in the north, you know, with uh, insurgency for mm. it's education. Mm. Education and more education. Mm. A lot of the young people who are involved in this don't even understand, you know, the Quran that they're even, uh, you know, really. mm. they, get, they get their teachings from people mm. who probably do also don't understand what, what they are they teach. talking about, mm. you yeah. know, and pervert, uh, you, know, the, you know, the teachings. Mm. And they go into it, uh, you know, with that, uh, you know, mindset and become mm. a liabilities, uh, mm. you know, to the society. Thank you. So there, 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 there are other issues. For example, the subsidy, the full, the, the entire petroleum, uh, 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 energy sector, <clears throat> not just maybe some other time where we'll, we'll, we'll go into uh, more details, but the in 2019, the former vice president, or as PDP presidential candidate at the time, he said that his government will privatize the NNPC. He, he will uh, uh, sell it off, you know. So now we have uh, an NPC that is NNPC limited, you know. But it's still maybe privatized, but still wholly owned by the Ministry of Finance. So, how do you see that position in 2019 vis a vis what we now have with the uh, NMPC? And more importantly, how do you hope to solve this problem? Because tomorrow <clears throat> we, we, we they said we don't have subsidy again. Then they said we have subsidy and then we're going to borrow money to do subsidies. What, how do you aim to fold, solve this problem for the long term? You know, we, we shouldn't have allowed this problem to, to persist hmm. upon time because there are also cost in, hmm. you know, there are implications, cost, whether if it is social or political or economic. Hmm. You know, because what is happening now mm. is that we are being drowned in all of these mm. challenges, you know, facing us. Mm. And we could have started much earlier. Mm. And some of the policies, some of the th things the vice president had advanced have been implemented in breach, even though they had denigrated him and called him all, you mm. know, names and all of that. What he was saying essentially mm. about the NNPC mm was to liberalize, you know, the, you know, the downstream, uh, you know, sector. It was liberalization, so to say. And Nigeria, I mean, as a government, as an entity, may have shares, but we give other Nigerians an opportunity to buy, mm. you know, shares. It will be owned, co-owned, so to say, mm. you know, with government, and then allow private sector to bring in mm. their firm. Because government cannot keep taking the funds that are supposed to uh, use for, for social services, mm. for the medical services, for education, mm. and then it begins to you know, put it in a, you know, to subsidize. And who are those who are benefiting from the subsidy? Mm. The people that you expect that will benefit from it are not those who are benefiting from it. Mm. 
So it's a catch, you know, 22. Mm. It needs to be rejected. There is a need to, you know, to reject. But they found themselves in a situation where they probably try, don't try to, they, you know, they, 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 they can be, uh, uh, you know, they take a step forward, they go step backward for political expediency. Mm. Thank you. That's what it is. Yeah, that, that, that's quite interesting, political uh, expediency. But that we've just about to the end of the program, but I'm sure there's one question that many Nigerians would be expecting uh, 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 that you asked since you represent the vice president. The vice president is associated with being rich, you know, but there's no harm or crime in that. And, but it's also associated sometimes with, with issues of corruption. How do you want to assure Nigerians that this isn't the case or how do you answer to that? Because a lot of people say that the real problem with the country is corruption. The vice president is not associated with corruption. Okay. The media, mm. helped by mm. you know, politicians, mm. have advanced that narrative. Interesting. Mm. It's all politically mm. you know, instigated. We know when, you know when all of this started. Mm. I mean, like you said, the, the former vice president has been wealthy. He made his legitimate money. Mm. He left the customs, set up you know, his businesses, mm. and he made money, good money, mm. which he has also put to good use mm. and use it in, ad, you know, in advance the cost of uh, you know, humanity, in education, mm. in Medicare, mm. you know, in scholarships, in all manner of uh, mm. you know, uh, 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 charitable uh, you know, ventures. Mm. So case of giving a dog a bad name to hang it. It's mm. not associated with corruption, mm. but it was tagged. Mm. I mean, he has said it clearly, you know, some time ago, that anyone that has anything, mm. they any way, mm. as of for corruption, they are, you know, mm. everybody knows, uh, mm. you, know, the, of, you know, the way to the, to the EFCs. Mm. They can, you know, write, have it to be investigated. Mm. So the question is, with all of this plethora, mm. with all of this uh, uh, trumpeting about, uh, you mm. know, corruption and corruption, mm. why have they not, you know, you know, dragged it? Thank you. So court. it's all about uh, uh, it, uh, uh, it, it give, in order to give a dog a bad name, as you said, in order to hang it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Paul Ibe, Mazi Paul Ibe, for coming on the show. We hope to have you once again. It's been quite interesting having this uh, discussion with you, and we wish you and your principal all the best of luck. Thank you also, uh, our viewers, for staying with us through to the end of this program. It is because you are always there for us. That's why we strive every day to bring you different editions of Daily Politics, where we trash and engage on issues of politics, policy, and governance. We hope that you'll find time to join us tomorrow again when we bring you another edition of Daily Politics. My name is Suleiman Suleiman. Good night.